So we also ran a vehicle miles traveled or projection on traffic and understanding your level of service and traffic flows. In California, you've, you've gone from a level of service trip measurement more toward a, a vehicle miles traveled. So level of service generally only told you about the road capacity and didn't tell you about how who's driving more. The VMT is a more accurate uh, way of, of understanding it. A level of service measures congestion and understands that when you widen roads, it's going to create this term called induced demand. Uh, Lewis Mumford in the 1950s called it expanding your belt to uh, fight obesity. It, it generally just encouraged more driving, which built more lanes. That's expensive. Uh, ve vehicle miles traveled looks at the traveler and not the congestion on the roadway and understands the patterns of that traveling and how you can change it which won't lead toward induced demand. Because basically, if you widen the road, more people will use the road and it'll just encourage more people to drive on it. So VMT sh shifts that and, and basically understands the cost of the road and measures the miles that people drive um, in any given period. You're planning to grow up to add 40,000 more people over the next um, 40 years. You're already moving through that trend of adding a lot of people. So it's being aware of that and how do you plan for that with your transportation infrastructure to minimize those trips and to reduce traffic congestion. So these are the ways that we visualize that is by how people travel. Um, and right now, this person that works um, in, in this zone, and this is a, just a generic person uh, that, that lives here, works here drops their kids off, goes shopping and comes back. That becomes that person's trip for them to achieve their needs in, in a day's drive, which is about 18 miles of consumption in the existing system. Now you're for to shift the, the location and say, all right, let's just do a development pattern that leans more toward a multifamily growth pattern or a more dense growth pattern. You can actually reduce the trip down to 16 miles. So that's a two mile savings, two miles less of road, uh, two miles less of expanding your community. And you can basically build it. And you can take it to a third level, which is an increased infill where there's existing land, there's existing opportunity, but there's other needs that need to happen uh, to facilitate that growth pattern. But you can still achieve all those daily needs in a much closer pattern and almost cut your trips in half. So this is all with the data. You can, we, we, you can look at these scenarios and see how they affect uh, your community. And you can also measure and understand where the heat effect is of where's, where the employment locations are. So you, you have these employment clusters. If you look at the whole county from the 30,000 foot view, it looks like all the jobs are in one area, but the, they're really not. When you tune in uh, to the areas of, of Roseville and, and Rockland, you can kind of see where they are is concentration. So getting your, your residential closer into that rather than spreading out is going to be a key factor to reduce the, the traffic congestion that you're going to experience if you just follow the level of service pattern. So you're going to want to try to compact in on this for all sorts of reasons, cost being the primary one. But you're going to have effects of reaching climate goals that your state sets as well as other environmental policies in addition to the economic policies. The projections that we ran, we're looking at the 40,000 people as a fait accompli. If you just keep on doing what you've always done, this is how you're going to consume land with those 40,000 people in this development pattern, this your conventional pattern. Um, so that's how much land you're going to chew through with those new 40,000 people, which is a lot of acreage. And it's going to bring with it your average VMT per resident is going to be about 20 miles. When you compact in a little bit, you can see how much less land you take. This is a different pattern of development to it. It's also going to consume less land, about half, and it's going to reduce the average road consumption down by about four miles, which is good. Now think of each, this is going to be a savings uh, to your community. And again, if you compact it in one more, Obviously, it's less land, a lot less land. It's going to be a, a, a different type of development pattern. It's going to be more based around transit and a higher density development pattern of infill. But you already own those roads. You already own that infrastructure, which is good. That's recycling that cost. And it's a whole lot less land consumption and a whole lot less VMT. 
So putting them side by side, here's the development pattern conventional. If you lean a little bit more toward multifamily, you'll consume a lot less land. And if you do a serious amount of infill, it's a oh, way a lot less land. And then just putting them all side by side as a pattern, you can see the average value per acre going from 1.5 million in this pattern to 4.5 to 8 million. You're dropping your VMT from about 20 miles down to 16, down to 14. So you're saving six miles per person in road on the right. So you're saving money and you're making a serious headway in your value. So you're going to be gaining more tax base out of it on less land and less infrastructure. And that's the value toward infill. This may take political action. It may be, it may be seen as controversial in some communities, but there's a reality in the facts and the data. And people may say, well, Joe, I want to live in this pattern. I want to have a lot of space. I don't want to be taxed that much. It's like, well, there's a serious reality to the cost of that infrastructure. And, and just saying things that we want isn't going to succeed in balancing your, your budget because there's a trade-off when you don't have money for the, the art teacher or the, or the park. It's because that money is, is covering the cost of all that infrastructure that you bought down. If it's all about happiness, I want to be six foot tall and have a full head of hair and eat lobster every day. And I think you should pay for it. Like, who wouldn't ask for that? It's just a matter of what you can afford. And you have to be real about the facts of the development patterns. And in defense of citizens, we haven't been given this data this way that we can see the low value that we get and the high cost that we're picking up. And that bill is coming due across America, not just in Placer County.